Hey, what's good, YouTube? I'm Dewan. Discontiguous networks. Before we even talk about that, let's talk about contiguous networks. I'm going to give you an analogy. This is straight from Kevin Wallace. Picture the continental United States of America. You got 48 states that we can drive through into with no problem. Now, in order to get to Alaska, you have to drive through Canada, which is another country, which makes Alaska discontiguous, even though it's part of the United States. Now, let's dive into this tutorial. Here, we have a Class A network, and I call this the contiguous 48 states, Class A. In order to get to Alaska, which is still the 10 network, Class A, um, you have to go through Canada, which is 172.16.0.0, which is a Class B. Now, when you're talking discontiguous networks, you have to understand auto summary. When you're configuring RIP, EIGRP, they're both um, interior gateway protocols, and you have to configure the no auto summary command, which means do not summarize this network when you advertise it to the next router. And the purposes of that is to eliminate the problems you have with discontiguous networks. I'm going to show you what goes on in a discontiguous networks and the problems you will have, and then we'll show you. I'll show you how to resolve it. So on R1, so if I do a show IP interface brief pipe exclude down, and I'll just show you the up interfaces. I have these already configured as loopbacks on this router, which is R1. Now what I want to do is go in here to config T, and I'm going to configure RIP on this device. Now whenever you're configuring RIP, you know that you have to use version 2 because version 1 is classful. It does not understand VLSM or variable length subnet masking, so you want to configure version 2. Now for both RIP version 1 and version 2, auto summary is on by default. We're going to leave it on so I can show you the issues you will have with a discontiguous network, but we're at least going to turn on version 2. The next thing we have to do is the network command. The network command is a classical command. So what I mean by that is if I enter network 172.16.1.0, which is my serial interface, if I enter that, the way the network command works is that it's actually going to enter 172.16.0.0 into the um, running config. So when you do a show run and you look at router rip under that, you, that's what you'll see up beside the network command. But I'll show you exactly what I mean here once we get this configured. So I can go in here and do network 10.1.1.0 because these are slash 24s. But I really don't need to do this. I'll just do a couple of them, and then I'll show you why I don't need to do this. 10.1.3.0. Now, I still will have to enter networks um, 4.1, 5.1, and 6.1, but I don't need to, and I'll show you why. So if I go in here and I do a show run, um, pipe, begin, Let's say router, and right here, when you look at router rip, this is it actually enters the full classful um, subnet into the routing table. So if I do a show IP protocols, it enables rip version two on all of my interfaces. These are the networks that is actually advertising. What I'm going to also do is turn on debug IP rip, so you can see what it's actually sending to and receiving throughout this process. So we'll turn that on. And here's, it's sending version two to this multicast address. We'll talk about that in another video, but it's actually sending version two right here. This is what it's actually going to send to R2. So let's go on R2. Let's enable IP debug rip, debug IP rip. And now what we're going to do is do a show IP interface brief pipe exclude down so I can show you my interfaces and we can get those configured for RIP, router RIP version 2.
Now we need to do the network command. Remember, we're going to save auto summary for later because I want to show you why you need to enable auto summary. Okay, now that RIP is configured, you can see it's sending version 2 out of both interfaces. It just received these updates from router 1. And as you can see, it's, it's receiving the full classful range from router 1. So if we go in here and do a show IP route, it's not receiving each slash 24. It's actually receiving the whole class A of the 10 network from router 1. Now, when we configure router 3, you'll see how this can become a problem. So if we go in here to router 3, enable. Let's go debug IP rip on this one too. I turn on the D debug IP rip so you can actually see the rip process as it's developing and it happens real fast. Uh, rip sends updates every 30 seconds, but it also does trigger updates. So anytime you make changes, add networks, anything, it'll send an update. Now let's go in here to show IP interface brief, pipe, exclude, down. And these are my interfaces, so we need to go in here to router rip version 2. If I was to configure version 1, it would not connect the rip because it's only going to send and receive in version 2 on the other end. Now, network, let's go 172.16. I can go 2.0, but again, and as you can see, it's receiving updates. It just received the update from um, router 2 for router 1 saying the 10.0.0 slash 8 is two hops away. But Alaska, which is R3, has that same classful um, network. So once I enter this here, watch what happens. And I'll just enter it. I'll just enter the first one, 1 1.0. And now it says it's building these update entries. But if we go down here to show IP RIP database, you can see auto summary for here is sending this as an auto summary to other routers and is receiving this from router 2. So if we do a show IP route, this is what my routing table looks like. I'm receiving the class of, the class A10 network from router 2. Let me do a UR. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off the debugging. You do a UR to turn off debugging, which is a undebug all or whatever. Just UR is all you have to enter. Now I'm going to do a show IP route, and you can look at my routing table. And here, I'm receiving the class A10 network from router 2. Also, now if we go over to router 2, what do you think is going to be on router 2? I'm going to turn off debugging, and then you can see the updates that it's sending and receiving. And it just received this from router 1, 172.16.1.1 is router 1. It received that. And now let's see if it received from router 3, it received the same thing. So what do you think is going to be in the routing table? Let's go show IP route. Boom. RIP load balances by default. So it sees the 10 network on both sides, and it's the equal amount of hops. RIP uses hops as its metric. So let's see how many hops it says. Show IP RIP database. So the 10 network on both sides is one hop away in the RIP database. If I was to ping a network in the contiguous 48 states on R1, I would go ping 10.1.4.1. Watch what happens. One ping got there, one ping didn't. One ping got there, one ping didn't. One ping got there. So three of my five pings got there. And it's going to be like that every time because it's load balancing. It's sending a ping to, I mean, it's sending a packet to R1. And it's sending a packet to um, R3 because it's load balancing. Now, if I do the same thing for um, Alaska, ping 
2.4.1. That's a network in Alaska. And you'll watch what happened. One pain didn't get there. One pain did get there. One pain didn't get there. Basically, you got two pains there, and the rest of them didn't make it. And that, that's going to be on and on and on. So if I come down here to a PC in Canada, let's ping Alaska. So if we ping 10.2.4.1, and we wait. Timeout. Ping got there. Okay, it's getting there. Now let's come back over and ping 1.4.1. Nope. 5.4 or 5.1. And as you can see, every other ping is making it. Now let's come back and go to 2.5.1. Nope. Every other ping is making it. So that's the purpose of the auto summary command. Once I configure the auto summary command, you won't have that problem because R2 will see each side the way it's supposed to be seen. So let's go in here to R1. Let's do an IP uh, show protocols. If you do a show IP protocols, you can see that auto summarization is in effect. So make sure whenever you're testing for your CCNA, you do that show IP protocols. You can, it'll tell you everything that's going on with RIP. You can see updates every 30 seconds, um, invalid after 180 seconds. The hold down is 180 80 seconds. And it'll be flushed from the routing table at the 240 seconds. And what is that? Um, after four minutes or something. And then it tells you that it's running version two and it receives version two. This is all RIP. Auto summarization is on. These are the inter interfaces that are running RIP. So, in other words, if you connect to these interfaces, that you can run RIP on these interfaces. These are the networks that are in the routing table that you're routing for on your device. So that's good to go. Now we need to go in here. Let's turn debugging back on. Debug IP rip. And then we're going to go config T. Then we'll go router rip. And all we want to do is do a no auto summary. Now, if we do a show IP protocols, automatic summarization is not in effect. And if we come over here, Let's do a debug IP rip, and you'll see what this is actually receiving. And I'll go ahead and turn on auto summarization on this one too, or turn off auto summarization on this one, and we'll go router rip, receive update from as router three. We haven't received one from router router one yet, so router rip. No auto, no auto summarization. And now look, let's do a UR. We just received an update from router one. And as you can see, this is from router one. It's showing every network. So now if I do a show IP route, look at the routing table. Boom, you fixed the problem of discontinuous networks. Now, we still have not fixed this issue because we're still low balancing because I have not turned off auto summarization on router 3. But once I do that, the routing table on um, R2 will look great. So router rip. And let's do a no auto summary. Now, we'll have to wait for this to um, update and send another update over here to our R2, but we should be good to go now. We still have not received an update. And actually, let's do a let's turn debugging back on and you'll see when the update triggers. Boom. Uh oh. No. You are. That's not what we want to do. We want to do a debug IP rip. There we go. Now we'll see the update. One more thing. When we had auto summary turned on, one ping was getting there, one ping was not. Um, get into its destination. Let's look at this real quick. If we were to throw another router in between R2 and R3, that would mean um, now Alaska is two hops away. So you would never even reach Alaska because it would no longer load balance because it's not the equal amount of hops. You would have one hop to um, the, the contiguous 48 states. 
but then it would be two hops to Alaska. So you would never even reach Alaska, you know, with that um, configuration if another router was in between R2 and R3. So that's something to keep in mind with discontiguous networks also. But let's do a UR, turn off debugging. Now we're back on R2. And if you look, we received updates from um, R3 with all the routes. So if we do a show IP route, boom. Now this is going to time out. This is still in the routing table, but as you can see, this timer is going to time out. So once it reaches 240 seconds, that's going to be out of there. But right now, we receive all the routes from R1 and then all the routes from R3. And if I do a show IP route, you see this timer is still running. It's going to get flushed at the 240 seconds. That's going to be out. But now everything's there. So if we ping any network on either side. We'll reach it with no problem. There will be no hiccups in our network. Now let's check this routing table, see if we're there yet. See, and it just keeps rising. Let's go over here and ping. We were having issues reaching a couple of these networks. And now everything's getting there with no problem. And if we go back up here to R2, let's see. And now, possibly down. It should be flushed out of the round table soon, and you'll just have this variable subnetted, and then you will have each network in your round table, and you should be routing with no problem. I hope I explained discontinuous networks. If you guys got questions, please feel free to hit the comment section below. Um, we're about to move forward in this RIP series. I got a lot more. I'm going to try and get a video out very often with some real detailed information to help you guys along your journey to getting your CCNA, CCNP, or whatever you decide to do. Because soon, I'm going to start working on my CCIE, and I want a lot of y'all to rock with me. So let's get it. I appreciate y'all support. And if you got questions, like I said, leave them in the comment section below. Peace.